Welcome back everybody. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am making a video today on my latest uh, rescue acquisition, if you will, of a vintage sewing machine. This is a Neki BU Mira, M-I-R-A. It is part of um, a model lineup that the Neki company, which was based in Pavia, Italy, um, it's basically um, I believe it's the second generation of machine models they had made. And I say that specifically for um, uh, for domestic sewing machines. Because remember, the Necky company, uh, Vittorio Necky, who founded the company, I believe he founded it before the Second World War, uh, was an industrial company. They made uh, all sorts of items, and they also produced industrial sewing machines. But this was part of their domestic line. And when it comes to zigzag, Neki put zigzag on the map. Now the zigzag or side uh, overcast stitch motion of a sewing machine is something that had been, um, been used in industrial machines for quite a long time. But the Neki company was, if they were not the first, they were one of the first to introduce um, zigzag to home sewing machines. And I many of people consider these some of the finest zigzag machines ever made. Uh, they are beefy and they are heavy. Uh, one of the things about Neckies from this period is they use a high shank foot system. That's not an issue or problem. Most vintage machines use low shank. Uh, Singer Slantomatics use slant shanks. This has a high shank and uh, there, there's no problem finding feet and attachments for these machines because High shank was also the standard for a lot of the industrial sewing machines. I don't know if that's true of the new ones, but certainly of the vintage era. They all used what were called high shank feet. So if you ever see one of these, you think, oh no, it's got a high shank foot. It's not an issue. It's not a problem at all. Uh, this model used, and your use is, uh, class 15 bobbins. And the bed of the machine is uh, sized to fit in Singer cases and cabinets like so many other competitors who were smart. They wanted some of Singer's business. Singer was the big gorilla of the sewing machine world, at least in terms of domestic machines. And other companies wanted a part of that business. And if you did, you were not going to talk uh, old Singer customers out of their tables and cases. They were not going to pay again because they were so crazy expensive. So you would, of course, size the bed of the machine to uh, fit. It has the curves at the corners, and it is the same uh, uh, um, set of dimensions. Occasionally, you will find that in terms of the actual uh, the hinge pins to put the machines into those tables, of course, this machine has uh, pins. Sometimes the pins will line up and sometimes you have to alter just a bit and that may have to do with the uh, the metric um, nature of European sizing. Uh, but generally I've been able to get them to work. Uh, now on the back you will see this is a Neki plug and power cord and appears to be in good shape the cord itself. Uh, in fact I suspect um, the original cords for these were often in a, some sort of rubber, which is often degraded. I think this, this actually, this plug was rewired uh, at some point because this is a much newer cord, which is nice. Um, now, this machine had, and if you look at my other video on the Mira, because I had another one like this, um, that uh, we'll talk about the aesthetics in a minute. Um, the Mira was the ultra deluxe model in the Neki lineup at the time. You could get a Neki BU Nova, which looks just like this machine for the most part, except that it came in black. And I believe it also came in sort of a, a grass green, Kelly green color. But this one in this sort of sage grade green color, uh, when you see this color, you are often looking at the, um, the Mira model. Now, you'll notice on the back, uh, yes, you have what you, what you might expect to see is one of the old style motors, you know, that it's mounted with a bracket on the side. And I believe it's a 1 amp, 1.1 uh, amp, which is um, 
this, this, by the way, the motor, like uh, for many European machines in that era, was made, this one says, made in USA. Um, uh, it was made here, and then it was uh, you know, painted in a color to match the machine. The electricals for uh, foreign-made machines in North America, they were often uh, sourced here in North America because um, in the early 50s, it's, it's really too soon after the Second World War ends, and they just, their co countries uh, around the world are not necessarily making things for uh, North American electrical systems. That would change later with the Japanese. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that's different, and it's different about the other Nekis. The other Nekis have, of course, a bracket that looks different. They have the motor and they have their belt, but they don't have this box. On one side, you see an off-on switch for the light. Uh, it's not plugged in right now, and when you see part of this machine, you'll know why. Uh, on the other side, you see high and low. <clears throat> this was state-of-the-art electronics, if we can call it electronics, for 1952, 1953. And what the Italians chose to do was to control speed and torque electronically. Now they had, uh, there are transistors, not transistors, there are capacitors in here, in this little box, that allowed them to control the speed. You could, you could put it on low, if you put it over to low, you, you know, the needle doesn't move as fast, but you get a lot of power. Um, these systems were amazing in their day. It's finding capacitors to replace the old ones is very tough. So when, you know, at some point, uh, if yours doesn't work, you can simply replace it with uh, a sewing machine motor and you get a slightly different bracket that say a, uh, it came off the black uh, BU Novas. And so you don't have to, uh, the machine's not dead when, when this setup doesn't work anymore. But as long as it works, it's pretty impressive. It was most definitely impressive at the time it was made. Um, no one, not even Singer, I believe, was using something like that, at least not in uh, the early part of the 1950s. So on the side here, you will see another feature. When you change your presser bar, you'll notice that there's an indicator, right? Which was a very clever feature that Necky uh, introduced. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, on top, Oh, you will see, and I think I've shown these to you guys before, these are the oiling holes, and that's not a surprise to see in a machine of this era, but of course they have spring-loaded caps. You push in, and you put your drop of oil, and as soon as you release, let's see if I can zoom in here and show you guys, if you haven't seen the other videos, and then as soon as you let go, the spring cap comes back, and it's simply to keep dust and, and whatnot out of your machine, which I think is a pretty clever... Uh, Pretty clever uh, innovation. Now, coming back to the to the side, this is incredible. This paint looks brand new. It's just not scratched. It's not peeling. Uh, Italian machines were known for a couple of things: incredible engineering, wonderful power from these neckies, but they were also known to have paint issues at times. <coughs> The black machines are notorious for sometimes delaminating, flaking off, and I'm not sure why. I don't know if it was the, the way they were coated when they were done in the factory, or maybe they were simply more vulnerable to um, degradation over time. I can't say. But I haven't seen as much of that as an issue with the green models. I have often found that the green models are simply soiled and dirty, but this one's gorgeous. Uh, I, I just noted that. When I got a hold of the machine, I went and I said, oh good, this is not stuck. Um, the tolerances and the close, the, close, um, the close tolerances of Italian machines from this era mean that if they sit in the wrong place and if that old oil gums up, they can be really tough to unlock. They can freeze up more easily than some of the other brands. That's just my own observation over time. Uh, and one, else, one other thing to make sure we don't miss, if you buy one of these, be aware. I don't know what it is, but uh, typically, this is not always the case, but I've noticed that the, that the insulation that the Italians used <coughs> was not as durable as that from some of the other makers. Any brand, I don't care whose it is, you've got to inspect your wiring. If it's a Necky from this period and it's original, well, 
you really need to inspect it. And you can see here where the jacket insulation has crumbled and now we're left with, uh, I, you know, here's one of the wires. Um, and I, I can say that the, when I went to buy it, the seller uh, plugged it in for me. It was in, it was in its table and I'll be making a separate video on the table when you see it, you'll know why. Um, if you look closely, you'll see more places where the insulation is gone. So they plugged it in and they showed me that it ran. And then they, you know, they, they turned it off. And then I started inspecting it and thought, oh, oh, well, I won't be plugging this in until I've had to, I've got to replace this cord, clearly. Um, it's just not safe to use. But these machines are amazing and I, and I would never uh, not, you know, ultimately want to restore a necky, even with that, uh, you know, wiring being being what it is. You can clearly see they've already replaced the wiring up here. So, what was so great about this machine other than the motor I just showed you? Um, some of the early Necky BUs had a different tension assembly. They eventually went to this model. I really like it. These are just nice and smooth. Uh, check springs, just wonderfully healthy. Uh, let's see. I did not see a light with this. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Yes, the light is actually over here. Um, some of the other Necky models had a rear mounted light, but this light is uh, in, in here and it seems to work just fine. At least the, the seller showed that to me. Now, you will see this device. You don't always see this on here, but this is what Necky called the Wonder Wheel. <laughs> and, and it has had its own, uh, you can see what remains of the old dry rotted rubber. Here's the bobbin winding tire. Uh, which is going to definitely need replacing. It's crumbling. You know, just look at it and it crumbles. This is a big rubber tire that is part of the Wonder Wheel. And, the, and I'm going to have to see, I may have, I'm not entirely sure. I have to go back and look at my own personal stash of salvage parts. I may have the rods. The connecting rods for the Wonder Wheel go missing and they're very hard to find. Um, but when you have the, one, the rods set up, and the, there's a manual for how to do this, and you have um, cams that were specially made for it. The Necky could do decorative stitches. It wasn't as uh, wasn't as sophisticated as the Singer 400 series the way it did them. But it's a fascinating thing to watch. You can pull up videos on the, this model when it's when the Wonder Wheel is in action, and it's just just I was mean, just amazing. Just you know, I just stare at it, just watching it work. It's kind of fun. Um, anyway, this machine has not been touched in a while. It has a, an old belt, and that belt is either originally was kind of green colored or white colored, and that's really old. So uh, what do I see in this machine? I see a machine that was in a table. Um, I got it from a place it had been sitting for about a decade. The original owner had left it, and uh, the place where they lived had kept it, and finally it was being sold, and I went and purchased it. Um, this is a very heavy machine. People who are very uh, interested in uh, mending the sails of their boats are particularly fond of these. When it comes to zigzag models, um, the Necky is one of the, uh, the most popular. It, it really is. And one of the things that, uh, I don't know if this is visible here, but I'll try to show you guys. Um, when I go to, there's a needle position uh, adjustment and it's to the right at the moment. Let me take the fabric off of here just to kind of simplify a little bit. In fact, I'll take the sewing foot off. I want you to see the needle and I want you to see something about these machines. Those of you who have this may already know or you may not. Uh, look closely, most machines that perform zigzag, you know, they, they move the needle bar side to side, right? But the shuttle and the hook down below behind the bobbin case doesn't. Well, that's not true of the Necky. Watch what happens. And I don't have this wired up, but I can mimic what, hap what will happen when I do finally get this machine running. Watch the needle. Keep your eyes on the needle and also down here below and watch what happens. Notice that when the needle moves side to side, so does the hook. Look at that. That's pretty interesting. That's the way Necky did things. And I believe there may be a, I think there may be a Singer, maybe the Model 237, the one that was made in, 
Well, they made them in France, they made them in Monza, Italy. I think it might work off the same mechanism. Not totally sure. But anyway, there you have it, guys. Just a quick primer. Uh, this is going to be tough for me because uh, the, the table this machine came in, and I'll be making a video on it, I'm going to be, uh, might have to end up keeping that table. I don't know if I'm going to keep the machine. Um, I've been tempted to keep my Singer 403A, which of course comes in this wonderful table that I've just been so smitten with. But now I have another Neki BU Mira with almost perfect paint. I think I see one little nick right down here on the front, uh, the front of the bed, which is, you know, can happen. But I have seen Neki machines particularly, they don't always have good paint, but even the decals are smooth. And I can just tell that the, that the clear coat that they sealed the, the decals with um, is intact. This machine appears to have been used a little bit, but not a ton. Uh, or if it was used a lot, someone took really good care of it. Um, you can't blame them for the, for the cord. That's just, that's just time, right? <laughs> Entropy at work with the old cord. But that's something that can be um, uh, replaced. So thank you all for watching. Uh, my latest, um, uh, one of my latest uh, finds, it's been hard to find machines lately. So many people are using them, but I've been looking for machines to restore. And uh, anyway, I'll be looking for more high shank uh, feet and accessories, easy to find. We'll be talking a little bit more about those as we go. Let me know what you guys think. Do you have a Neki from this period? Um, I've, if you go on my channel and you search under Neki, you'll find a number of these. I, uh, I've had one like this that was in gorgeous shape like this one. The paint was shiny, it was relatively clean. Um, and then I've had other Neckies where the paint was rougher, but I love them so much. Uh, they're one of my favorite zigzag machines, particularly if you're going to sew heavy fabrics. But stay tuned, we'll be making more videos as I, as I uh, talk more about these uh, incredible time capsules from long ago. Um, and then I'll be also showcasing the table it came in. And the table that this machine came in deserves its own video. And when you see it, uh, uh, you'll understand why. Thanks for watching, everybody.